Hello, this is John Hesse, Cahoka Presbyterian Church. We're reading from Of Moose and Men by Tori Martin and Doug Peterson, reading the chapter entitled The Flavor of Stupid. I was hunched over in my desk in the cabin writing one early evening, and I was suffering from a bad case of writer's block, which in man speak means that my attention was on the baseball game rather than putting words to the paper I was trying to come up. I was trying to come up with a plot line in a story called Forsaken Bacon about how the big bad wolf became saved, but the ideas were not flowing. Suddenly, Sam started barking and charging back and forth. If I hadn't been listening to the game, I might have realized that his barking was more than a simple desire to go outside for a walk. I would have realized it was a warning. Oblivious, I got up from my desk, my thoughts jumbled by baseball and bacon, and opened the cabin door to let Sam out. Immediately, I spotted the bear. Not far from the front door, it was going through the trash bag Rob had forgotten to take to work for disposal. Bear? I thought, I closed the door and waited a couple of seconds. Then I opened the door again. Yep, it's still a bear. <clears throat> Slamming the door, I immediately moved into panic mode. Our cabin door did not latch shut, and we would often kick the door open whenever we were carrying something in our arms. But this also meant that a bear could push open the door. So I scooted the refrigerator in front of the door to keep the bear out. This also made it handy for me to grab a last meal, should things go awry. With the fridge in position, I glanced at my watch and saw it was 5.30 p.m., which meant that any time now, Rob would be returning from work and walking up the trail. Rob would see the bear and start praying, and the bear would see Rob and think that its prayers had been answered. Leaping into action, I ran to the living room and called Rob on his cell phone to warn him. My fingers were shaking as I dialed, and I shouted into the phone, Rob, there's a bear right outside the cabin door. Shanghai, please place order. Unless Rob had suddenly learned to talk in a Chinese accent, I had misdialed and reached a Chinese carryout. Although as an emotional eater, an egg roll sounded pretty good right now. Resisting the temptation to order dinner, I hung up and dialed again. Rob, yeah, no Chinese accent this time, so I continued. There's a bear right outside the cabin door. Where's that can of pepper spray I gave you? That was an odd question to ask in the middle of a crisis, I thought, but I answered anyway. Well, yeah, it's in the spice rack. But did you hear what I said? There's a bear outside the cabin door. I thought I was the one that had problems focusing. An audible sigh came across the phone, followed by a condescending tone in his next words. Tori, you're supposed to use the pepper spray on the bear. Rob was making no sense. I felt as if you were talking Chinese to me. <laughs> I really don't have time for cooking tips right now. Besides, wouldn't the bear have to be dead before I tried to season it? Another sigh. That's when Rob finally explained to me the proper use for pepper spray. He said that a few months earlier, not long after he shot the bear in front of our cabin, his friends at work had given him a can of pepper spray in case he had to drive away another Bruin. Then when he got home from work, he gave me the pepper spray and said, use this if you ever have to. And so I did. I began using the pepper spray to season my homemade chili and tacos and burritos for the longest time. I should have suspected it wasn't a spice because it gave my chili a strange chemical taste whenever I sprayed too much. I also thought it was pretty odd that the pepper spray came out in a cone-shaped mist, but I figured the nozzle was just broken. I learned to carefully position the nozzle close to the food so that the mist wouldn't drift back into my face and cause my eyes to sting. This wasn't the only time I had creatively used ingredients in my food. In another case, I purchased a lemon-scented furniture polish and a butter-flavored pan spray from Walmart, and they just happened to come in almost identical generic yellow spray cans. So I mistakenly placed the lemon-scented furniture polish in my cupboard and the nonstick pan spray under the sink. That explained why those pancakes tasted so lemony and why our pets kept swarming the furniture and licking it madly. The good news was that by using nonstick spray on the couch, I never stuck to the pleather. 
And of course, my penchant for mistakes still doesn't explain why I didn't know what pepper spray was used for. In my defense, I didn't know anything about pepper spray because Los Angeles, where I used to live, had banned it. Pepper spray was also illegal in New York. And those were two places where you think it must be needed. Evidently, carjackers in LA were using the weapon to temporarily blind motorists so they wouldn't identify the person stealing their car. In New York, meggers were spraying people and then grabbing their purses and wallets. So I thought I had a good excuse for not knowing what pepper spray was. But Rob wasn't quite so sympathetic with my ignorance. He said those words, and I quote this exactly because Rob is the kind of guy who hates to be misquoted, what flavor of stupid are you? I paused for a moment. Stupid comes in flavors? Just put the phone down, spray the bear, and come back and tell me what happened, he said. Okay, I said, but inside I'm thinking, it was easy for him to sound logical and reasonable over the phone. He wasn't the one with a great big black bear outside the front door. A bear that was staring at our cabin like it was a McDonald's drive through And I was the double Happy Meal he wanted to order. Or from my perspective, an unhappy meal. But I obeyed Rob's command. Sitting down the phone, I grabbed the pepper spray from the spice rack. Acting swiftly before I had to think about how much danger I faced, I pushed the refrigerator back, hurled open the front door, raised the can of pepper spray, and sprayed myself directly in the face. <coughs> in my panic, I aimed the wrong direction and took a face full of pepper spray. It felt as if my face were on fire, or I dipped my face in a pan of hot oil while bobbing for apple fritters. Pure agony. I stumbled around the kitchen, hands clamped over my eyes, and I managed to bump every pot, pan, and cabinet. Blinded, I knocked over a chair and smashed an entire dish strainer of glasses and plates, bringing it crashing to the floor. Believe you me, I forgot all about that bear. I also forgot that Rob was still on the phone, which I had set down. Rob was driving home, and when he heard my scream of pain, he assumed the bear was in the process of shredding me to pieces. So Rob floored it and raced for home at 90 miles an hour, maybe faster. <clears throat> Pepper spray also causes an immediate release of the contents of a person's nose. So snot was flowing like a fountain. I'm sorry, that's the only way I can think of to describe it. I used my hand to wipe my nose, and in the process, I spread the oil-based pepper spray all over my face. My eyes also swell so badly I, could, badly I could hardly open them with my fingers. Still, I managed to feel around in the freezer blindly and locate ice cubes to put on my eyes. I briefly considered using a carton of ice cream for relief, but I knew it would go straight to my hips, not to my eyes. I'm an emotional eater, remember? Still bumbling around, I desperately tried to catch my breath because when I screamed and opened my mouth, I had swallowed some of the pepper spray and it was burning. The pepper spray also made my throat go numb, making it difficult to breathe. And I started wheezing and gasping. Still on the phone, Rob thought he was hearing my dying gasps. I plopped down at the kitchen table and was holding the ice to my swollen eyes, still trying to breathe, when I suddenly heard the cabin door swing open and slam against the wall. That's when I remembered, the bear. In my pain and panic, I'd forgotten all about the bear. It had pushed open the door and was preparing to devour a leg of Tory, heavily seasoned with pepper spray. Then I heard a voice, Tory, a talking bear? Are you okay? That bear sounded just like Rob. Yeah, I, I guess so, I said. With my swollen eyes, barely able to open, I made out the blurry image of Rob, standing a few feet away. Where's the bear? He asked. I don't know. Guess all my screaming and flailing about must have scared it off. Hey, this pepper spray really works on bears, doesn't it? Although, if I'd have designed it, I would have had the nozzle face the other direction. This story taught me an important lesson, beyond the most obvious, which is, when you use pepper spray on a bear, make sure you have the container pointing the right direction. It taught me about the importance of the Bible in my life. Okay, I realize that pepper spray and scripture don't seem linked at first glance. But my encounter with the bear made me think of the Bible as a weapon. 
a very powerful weapon that God has given us. It's like a divine pepper spray for life. And the directions are pretty simple if we take the time to open the pages and read them. Now, unfortunately, many of us keep our Bibles or our pepper spray on our bookshelf or our spice rack. And we have no idea how to properly use them. As a result, we wind up being blinded by our own blundering ignorance. So take your Bible off the bookshelf, open it up, and get familiar with the context that God has provided. I guarantee if you do that, the next time you're under any sort of a spiritual attack, you'll save yourself a bear of a time. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Have a good week.